Hello, I'm Alex, and this week I've been solving Rubik's Cubes. I've learned the ZZ line method, which relies less on algorithms and more on your brainium in your cranium. Before we get started, let's talk about some basics. First of all, you'll notice that the only moves you can make are rotating entire sides. What this means is that the center of each side can never move. No matter what you do, the centers are always in the same spot. And that's very helpful to remember, because then you can refer to different sides of the cube. How I hold the cube is with green facing towards me, which means blue is facing away from me, and with yellow at the top, which means white is at the bottom. And then, on either side, you have orange to the right, red to the left. One thing that will become important later is distinguishing between the three types of sides. So the bright colors, white and yellow, are the top and bottoms. The happy colors, green and blue, are the front and back. And the angry colors, orange and red, are on the sides. The steps are edge orientation, EO line, bottom two thirds, and last layer. In edge orientation, we make sure all the edges are rotated the correct direction, even if they're not in place yet. For example, you can see that in between this white and green edges, this edge is flipped the wrong direction. It's easy to tell when edges are in correct orientation when they're in their correct position, but you can tell even when they're not. Rotating the front or back sides of the cube change the orientation of all the sides on that face. During this step, we will rotate all the edges so that they are in their correct orientation. What this means is that for the rest of the solve, we won't have to turn the front or back faces ever again. Learning to tell if an edge is in the correct orientation or not, while it's not in its place, is probably the hardest part of this whole method. But there are some simple rules to get us started. The rules only apply to the edges on the top and bottom faces, or on the middle edges of the front or back edges. The rules are complicated, but I'm only going to go through them once because you can rewind. First, if the side you're looking at has the top or bottom color on it, you're good. Second, if the edge is the orange or red color, the angry side colors, that means it's automatically a bad edge. So we know that these two are bad edges. Finally, if the edge is the front or back color, green or blue, look to the other face of that edge. And if it's the top or bottom colors, uh, yellow or white, that means it's a bad edge now. Once you know which edges are good or bad edges, your goal is to make all the edges good edges. Rotating the front or back sides makes all the edges on them switch from being good or bad. So if they were good before, now they're bad. If they were bad before, now they're good. When I do this step, I like to check the front four faces first, because if they're all bad faces, I can just rotate it, forget about it, and move on with my life. Whereas if I was checking the top faces and then the bottom faces, I'd have to memorize all the edges on the cube before I did anything about any of them. This is a bad edge because you can see right here, it's the left or right colors. This is a good edge. This edge we need to check though. Not a top or bottom color, so that one's good. And then we look at this, that one's also bad. So now that we know we have two bad edges on this, let's see if we can fill these two good edges with bad edges instead. So you look at this one, we need to check around the edge. Oh, that's the top color, so we know we need to replace it. Well, we know it's bad, so we can slot it into this. This is orange, so we know it's bad. Now that all four faces here are bad, let's give you a quick look at these again. Once we rotate it, now they're all good. So let's check that real quick. That's the top color, so that's good. Bottom color, so that's good. Go around the corner, that's good. Go around the corner, that's good. Now let's do the back face. This one is good. This one's bad. This one's bad. This one's bad. So if we can fill this slot with another bad one, then that'll be an easy solve. Oh, that one's bad. Put that one right in there and rotate it. Now we're going to double check all the faces on the cube. All four of these are good. These two are good. These require further check. Those are good. All right, now let's look at the front two. This one's good, this one's good, this one's good, this one's good. 
The EO line is a simple step where you simply place the front and back bottom edges. What this does is that it means that you no longer have to turn the bottom of the cube either. For this step, all we need to do is locate the green-white edge and the white-blue edge and place them right here. So let's do that real quick. Here's the blue. Get it under the bottom. Oh, the green's already here, so just one more rotation of the bottom. And now we have our EO line, straight from here, across the bottom, to here. When placing these edges, it's important to not forget what we did in our first step, and make sure that we don't rotate the front or back faces. We no longer have to ever move this bottom face again. Now the only moves remaining to us are right, left, and top moves, which will make the rest of the solve very easy. During the bottom two thirds step, you'll use block building to construct and then place the two sides on either side of the EO line. There's a lot of ways to go about block building, and I haven't looked them up. This is just what I've figured out from experience. First, I pick a section of the cube that I want to construct first. Usually I start with this back left corner here. So I'm looking for white, blue, red corner. So you locate that first. Here it is, white, blue, red. Keep a finger on that. Then I want to connect it to this back left corner here. So we're looking for blue and red, which is right here. Now all we need to do is connect them together and then place them. Well, actually, we'll, we'll connect one more edge after that. So now we've connected this corner and this one. So we're trying to fill in this corner, right? So we've already connected this blue, white, red corner with this blue, red edge. Now we need the white, red edge. Let's see if we can't find that. Here's that edge. So now we need to connect all of those. So now you can see that I've connected those three together. And the next thing to do is just place them, which isn't hard. We put it right in here. And now we've finished this like quadrant of the cube. Next, we need to find these two, connect them, and place them in here. So what are we looking for? We're looking for white, green, red, and then the green, red edge. So here's white, green, red, and here's the green, red edge. So let's put that down somewhere, slide this on top, and now this is finished. Then, once it's connected, we need to slide it in right here. So we'll move this up, slot in the block we just created, and put it back. Now, this bottom two-thirds half is finished. And now we need to start over here. Now that we've finished this half, we don't want to disturb it, and so we have less area to work with. Now we can only make right and top moves in order to construct and place these blocks over here. During the last layer step, I'll use three algorithms to finish up the solve. This is the note card I've been bringing around with me all week in my wallet, and it has all the algorithms for the last layer written on it. Now, I only use this to learn, and I have them memorized now. When I found these online, they just come as a string of characters, which is um, difficult to memorize. And then I have on this note card kind of divvied them up to make it easier to memorize. These letters stand for um, the different sides of the cube that you can rotate. The tick mark means that you turn it counterclockwise instead of turning it clockwise like you do for the rest of them. And the two afterwards just means you rotate it 180 degrees. With a freshly scrambled cube, I will now try to solve it while explaining myself. All right, so on this first side, this one's bad, this one's bad, this one's bad, this one's bad. Easy, you'll love to see it. All right, on this back side, this one's good, this one's good, this one's good, and this one's good. All right, we do still need to check these edges. So this one is bad, this one is good, this one is good, this one is bad. So we have two bad edges. In this situation, we place one in there, we rotate it, we place the other in there, rotate it again, and then we'll double check to make sure everything's good. Those four are good, these four are good, these two are good, these two are good. All right, now, 
We just need to find, there's white, blue, white, green. So now we've got our EO line. Oh, I'm holding the cube upside down. Rip. Easy enough to fix. Okay, now we've got it. <laughs> um, so we'll start with this back here. So red, blue, white. Here's red, blue. Lucky enough that it's just there. And so is that. Nice. That's a good start to this. Red, green. Here we go. It's, there's that. Um, and here is this. All right. And we'll slot that in. Oh, rotated it the wrong way. Or, nope. <laughs> this is the wrong corner. Silly me. Again, looking at it through the uh, camera makes this harder. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, so we need this, basically those two. I'll just bring them around to me. There's that. And then we need to align them with this. That in there. Is that correct? Nice. There we go. And now that is all finished. That's all finished. Um these edges are already placed, which is lucky. And we've already got one corner here. That just leaves, oh god, the algorithm I'm worst at. Yeah, okay. All right. That is a solved cube. Thanks for watching me play around with Rubik's Cubes. If I get this on YouTube, hit all the internet buttons. Next week's goal is to finish writing a song about all the wonderful things in my life I'm thankful for. A recording and a video of me playing that song.